In this video, I'll give you detailed specifications and dimensions for the Donkey, a foam board scratch built plane that I made for uh, cargo dropping and all around fun flying, easy to set up and take down and take to the park, and has landing gear, which is an unusual for my design. Because this was a kind of a one off design, uh, there is no uh, formal build video. However, anybody that's uh, experienced with the experimental airline building techniques with foam board, the arm and wing, and the tubular fuselage, I should be able to replicate this plane with the dimensions and specifications and with your own improvements. The donkey was made with a three and a half inch uh, fuselage, three and a half inches uh, wide and three and a half inches tall in order to accommodate a full uh, 12 ounce uh, soda can in this cargo door. That was kind of the one uh, detail in the design that I needed to make sure it had an adequately sized cargo bay, but any other dimensions are negotiable within uh, certain limitations. Uh, I made this plane just to be able to fit in my car reasonably well with the wing removed and be able to be set up uh, pretty quickly and taken down quickly. The compromise is that I would have ordinarily put struts on this plane to support the wings and prevent fl some flex. The overall length is 40 inches. That's 36 inches worth of foam board uh, tube with um, a control surface that's elevator in the back and of course the motor and spinner in the front. And I've used a five inch airflow cord plus 1.5 inch uh, aileron and flaps, uh, but this can also be adjusted with um, a, a larger cord if you prefer. So let's go ahead and have a look at the plane on the bench. First the basic dimensions and the uh, orientation and arrangement of each of the uh, components of the aircraft using the firewall here as the datum, so that's the zero point. So we'll measure back uh, sequentially each of the components here. Uh, the nose gear uh, strut starts one inch rear of the datum. The hatch on the top is uh, four inches back, so it provides that slope. The uh, cargo bay door begins ten inches rear. The rear of the cargo door is uh, just over sixteen inches rear of the datum, so the cargo bay itself is about six inches itself, and that's adequate for a, a soda can or similarly uh, generously sized uh, cargo in there. The main landing gear is uh, also 16 inches rear of the datum. So that's this point right here. And that is the forwardmost point that can be allowed and not get in the way of the cargo bay door. Um, but it's well behind the CG, probably a little bit further back from the center of gravity. Uh, than it needs to be, but the plane will still uh, rotate adequately upon takeoff. This sloping up shape for the tail occurs 24 inches rear of the datum. The horizontal stabilizer is 20 inches in span. The root cord, including the 1.5 inch uh, elevator here, is uh, 6 inches and the tip cord, including the elevator, is four inches. So this is the essentially the basic shape that would be cut out and then the elevator would be hinged from that overall shape. The vertical stabilizer is nine and a half inches tall and that's a very generously sized vertical stabilizer I chose to use with this plane so that it could fly in high angles of attack with uh, flaps deployed and also having a very broad fuselage back towards the vertical stabilizer. The vertical stabilizer can become blanked, so to speak, that is caught up in the turbulence behind and above the fuselage, the flaps, and the wing. So having an addi additional bit of height here can provide additional yaw stability in this uh, particular design of plane. The effective total root cord of the vertical stabilizer is six inches, and by that I mean the distance between the true leading edge and the ultimate trailing edge, not accounting for this little notch right here. Obviously the attachment point itself is only about four and a half inches uh, to the fuselage and the total tip cord including the rudder itself is four inches. With the wing held here in its mounted position the center of gravity is 12 inches rear of the datum from this point to the thickest part of the wing or slightly forward of that 12 inches. The overall length of the fuselage itself is 36 inches from this point to this point here. And this particular shape of the rear of the plane is obtained from cutting off the 30 inch fuselage tube here halfway down and six inches uh, from the tip. So that will obtain this slope and that piece of foam board tube 
which is obtained from cutting that off, is flipped around and uh, attached here with uh, gift cards applied inside the fuselage here, uh, carefully glued and secured and then taped over. So that provides a nice sloped up rear to 36 inches here. So the six inch section is removed and flipped over to here. The overall length from the uh, spinner to the elevator in this case is 40 inches total. Now I'll go over the anatomy of the plane from front to back. Uh, first is the motor, which is a Turnigy NTM prop drive 3536 1400kV motor. That's the powerhouse that I've detailed in a previous video with a 10 by 5 inch master air screw prop. This uh, has relatively good efficiency, great amount of power, runs pretty cool. It's just a power plant combination that I'm particularly comfortable with, and it yields a thrust to weight ratio of about 1 to 1 with this plane uh, without uh, a substantial cargo, but with a 5,000 milliamp hour. Uh, battery pack on board. Uh, it's mounted to a balsa and gift card uh, firewall, which I'll show you the inside. Here's the firewall, which I've constructed of one inch thick balsa and gorilla glued to that uh, a gift card or an ID card to the back and to the front here, which is taped over. So essentially, it's a piece of balsa like this, a gorilla glue applied, and clamped down cards uh, front and back like this. Uh, there are many other solutions that would probably work just fine, including uh, some thin plywood or some uh, light hardwood like this. And then to the uh, front of that, of course, is the, the motor is screwed. And then between those um, motor screws, the steering mechanism for the nose gear is uh, carefully attached and fit in right there. The servo is a Metal Gear uh, servo, a Corona brand, uh, attached to the steering horn right there so that, that articulates and stays relatively out of the way. Um, this little wrench uh, here I just keep on hand in case the nose gear gets tweaked I can loosen the set screw and uh, readjust that. Right behind that is the uh, Turnigy Trust 55 amp speed controller and that is uh, placed in front of these uh, cooling holes that are uh, placed through the front of the firewall and through which the uh, speed controller wires pass right here. So. These holes allow uh, cooling air in the front, and the, of course the exit for the um, cooling air must be provided, and I'm ashamed to admit a lot of that is taken up by just the slop in the, uh, in the hatch. There's a little gap right here that allows the air to exit. A proper air exit hole might not be a bad idea. There's an XT60 connector, which can easily engage the uh, battery packs, and you can fit quite a bit of battery in here. I typically use a 5 amp hour three cell a 12 volt pack and plug it in right there. Um, I've used a magnet uh, closing mechanism here. These have always been a little problematic for me. Um, the flat to flat magnet mounting almost always pulls off no matter how well you glue it. Um, uh, here I've used a flat on this side and vertically oriented on the sides with an additional magnet placed in between that allows that to kind of slide up and down to engage this magnet uh, better and tends not to pull it off of the uh, surface to which it's glued on the hatch here. So far so good. Here is the access hatch for the uh, receiver which is attached to the underside of it right here just for easy access because the flap and aileron servos do need to be plugged in. And here's a flight stabilizer, a Turnigy uh, Orange RX 3-axis flight stabilizer. I've got a small uh, voltage smoothing capacitor plugged into it as well. Because the receiver is mounted here amidst this disaster of an RF interference situation with all these wires and so forth, I have uh, put a satellite receiver, tunneled the wire back, and it's located inside this semi-permanent uh, hatch right here. So there's nothing back here but foam. And this is also the exit point for the leading edge wing mounting mechanism. Uh, honestly, this is a little bit more complicated probably than it needs to be. In retrospect, I would have done just as well using rubber bands and some simple tie downs, but just for the record, I can show you how I've done this. This forward bulkhead for the uh, cargo bay right here is comprised of the same or similar uh, balsa. Uh, I actually used half inch here, uh, but one inch, three quarter inch, whatever you have handy would be fine. Cut roughly to size, uh, it's maybe a millimeter or two larger than the foam, so it has a nice tight fit. And that uh, fills the entire space of the fuselage at this position, like this. 
On the top I've attached a thin piece of metal. This happens to be some scrap one millimeter titanium, but anything will do. And I'll just illustrate it with this uh, piece of uh, aluminum angle iron. And so what's done is that is screwed, um, a broader piece of course than this, as you can see, uh, screwed to that bulkhead and protruding up above the fuselage just enough to engage a piece of carbon fiber or micarta, which I've shown here. This is FR4 G10. It's fiberglass reinforced plastic. And see the link below for uh, a source for this. And that allows that piece to fit right up underneath that piece of metal at the leading edge of the wing. At the trailing edge, there's a similar mechanism provided. However, the angle uh, metal, instead of being on the top of the bulkhead, is affixed to the front of the bulkhead like this and remains inside the foam board and th through the underneath of that piece of metal uh, these nylon uh, bolts are placed up through the fuselage as you can see here and the wing nuts are applied over that so the ultimate effect is I made the plane with just the plate like this to fit under the leading edge bolt down to the trailing edge and then affix that plate to the wing here you can see that mechanism and profile so that the metal uh, rises from the fuselage just enough to admit that plate beneath it. Here is that apparatus. Uh, in this instance I've used carbon fiber, uh, but any stiff um, material will do. And I've um, the lip in the front here at the leading edge is what engages underneath this piece of metal. I've used safety wire uh, simply to affix this to the spar through the foam. So this wire goes down through the foam around the spar back out and is twisted. There is 3M two-sided foam tape uh, here, here, and here to prevent this from torquing side to side. And these three pieces of safety wire are ample enough to uh, hold this wing under a great amount of force. And then there are holes drilled here and here to engage these two nylon bolts here. So for setup, what is done is that leading edge plate is engaged under the retention plate on the fuselage, slid forward until it drops down onto the bolts like that, and then these wing nuts are uh, placed on the top there. It is a very quick setup at the field, uh, but the construction and the engineering of it was somewhat com more complex than I would have liked, so your discretion on the wing affixing method. As for the cargo bay door, I've made this one out of uh, micarta, that's the FR4 G10 fiberglass reinforced plastic. It's uh, two millimeters thick, and it is uh, just over six inches, so six and a half inches long to cover the six inch cargo bay and the width is slightly wider than the hole as well at three and a half inches and I've used a not a very elegant but the mechanically most simple way I could think of to keep this closed and that's a quality Metal Gear servo with the arm uh, positioned to swing over the door like that the hinge is made of vinyl tape and it uh, simply drops open like that um, double doors um, retracting mechanisms such as a rubber band uh, may be useful I wanted to have a, as affirmative a drop as possible, so nothing in the way for this door just to flop open and stay open, and it doesn't seem to affect the flight at all. But there's a million different ways to do this, and some of them better uh, than this one, as you see right here. This servo is, of course, uh, the wire is tunneled up through the fuselage and is plugged into the receiver here. Here is the balsa forward bulkhead, and the rear bulkhead here I've reinforced with micarta if only to screw that piece of metal to it. So this is the piece of angled metal that I've installed inside the plane. It's screwed to the, uh, the rear bulkhead here and then bears the uh, nylon bolts here and here that protrude up through the fuselage to the top to mount the wing. The landing gear struts are 1 8 inch music wire which is commonly available from hobby shops or online. Uh, it is pretty darn strong and relatively stiff but provides enough give for cushioning. In order to clear this 10 inch prop here with the motor positioned uh, right in the center of the firewall, uh, but of course this, this is a kind of a low mounted motor, uh, the gear strut from the bottom surface of the fuselage to the axis of rotation is four and a half inches in this case. Angled at approximately 90 degrees, uh, the rear struts need to be geometrically um, about five and a half inches long. It's difficult to show you here, um, but the overall height is the same as the uh, main gear, which ends up being about four and a half inches 
from the lower surface of the fuselage to the axis of rotation uh, of the wheels. These wheels are uh, just economical foam uh, wheels and they are three inch diameter. I have reinforced the steerable nose wheel entry point for the strut with a piece of uh, micarta or carbon fiber, anything of your choice that's stiff with a hole drilled through it just to disperse some of the uh, landing and takeoff forces against that strut so that it's not all borne by the steering mechanism up here itself. For the servos, I like to use a Quality Metal Gear 9 gram size. They end up being really about 12 grams in actual weight. Uh, Corona from Hobby King is one brand that I like to use, but there's just so many to choose from. Just pick one that you like and can easily get. Control horns are the plastic gift card style. Uh, just cut to shape, bent in an L, and pushed through the opposite side of the control surface, out this side, glued in place. Here is the wing for the donkey, and I've used the 5 inch airfoil here, so that's the, the folding dimension of the wing, plus a 1.5 inch uh, control surface, so ailerons outboard and flaps inboard. And I chose the narrower cord for a higher aspect ratio for more scale-like performance for takeoffs and landings and touch and goes, uh, which I prefer with this plane. It would not be wrong to use a thicker cord just for overall more raw lift, but a little bit more weight too. I also kind of wanted this to look a little bit like um, a scale airplane with a, a similar aspect ratio, but just be advised either cord will do. I do recommend at least a one and a half inch uh, aileron. In fact, I wish I'd made these two inches, to be honest. The aileron is uh, 13 inches, and the flaps each are uh, just over 12 inches too. And so they're essentially equally sized with the same. 9 gram size uh, Metal Gear Servo for the ailerons. The flaps right here and right here buried in the wing. As for the fuselage tube construction for the donkey, I do really recommend the uh, crease or emboss and fold style like this you see here. It's a bit harder and less forgiving to perform this, however it results in a stiffer uh, fuselage tube, especially once the cargo bay is cut into it. So that disrupts the otherwise uh, very strong uh, square tube cross section. The paper removal technique that I've traditionally used here is extremely easy to perform and very easy to bend and somewhat forgiving with uh, imperfections and um, inaccuracies in measuring because you can kind of squish it into square as it were but it tends to be just not quite as strong as you need for this workhorse of a plane.